my roommate, who um, was studying to be a doctor, and my brother was a doctor as well. Mm -hmm. That's how we knew Dr. Becker here. Um, he says, yeah, do accountant, right? Yeah. Do, go into accountant. Everybody my mom said the same thing. <laughs> doctor, lawyer, accountant. Yeah. I did one accountant class. I said, no way. I am We're done. done here. I am Thank done. You very much. I'm done. Yeah. I'm done. I'm done. And I said, no, come here to what you felt that was right and stick to your real estate. Gotcha. Yeah. And, um, and that was through the business school. So you had to do all the business classes and whatever. And then you had the, the classes that dealt with the real estate. Gotcha. You know? So the real estate degree, bachelor's, um, that allowed me to um, open up a lot of doors. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so there's a lot of stories behind having that degree coming out of FSU when you want to get into the career of real estate in the state of Florida, yeah, how, how it really did open up a lot of opportunities. And that was one of the first real estate programs. Now it's pretty standard, right? Like every university has a degree in real estate. Maybe not that much. No. Um, statistically, Jeff, with NAR, and I haven't um, looked it up probably in the last five years, but only about 3% of people in the real estate industry actually have a degree. Yeah, like you yeah. mentioned before. Interesting. Yeah, it is interesting, right. So when you got that opportunity to say, all right, I can build a business, I can sell it, I can work with my family, which is harder than you think, right? Mm -hmm. We can make this work. And you got the opportunity to move to Chicago. Did you feel like you were retaking that opportunity again to it, like go on like the American dream and use your education? Or was it like, I can't even think about that. I'm just gonna say yes, because I wanna get out of here. Um, combination, um, you know, working with family can always be kind of tricky. Right? Yeah. Being a 21, thinking that you know the world, thinking you matured. and But it was just that drive to want to explore. Yeah. Want to learn, want to grow. And um, and I felt that it, it was just a great opportunity. I knew nothing about uh, currency. They said, you know, we'll give you a job when working on the mercantile exchange. Yeah. And I was like, what is that? I don't know what that means, but okay, let's go. Right. Yeah. So I've got a business degree and they say, we'll start you as a runner. And I said, okay, that, that's what it takes. And um, again, did really well. Yeah. I became within a year, I, be, I went from being a runner to an arbitrator on the floor trading, Yeah. which was quite... Was this exciting? In, this was the '80s in Chicago, right? Right. Yeah. So back then, you actually had that. What is that? Um, <laughs> Eddie Murphy movie where they have like they actually like they're writing it down. They're yelling at each other. They're all wearing suits. And they're talking about their like uh, hypertension medication uh, in the unbelievable. bathroom. That unbelievable. That was the environment. That was right? the environment. Gotcha. Yeah. So you're 22 at this point. 22, going on to 23. Gotcha. Um, but anyway, so when I hit Chicago in December. Yeah, that's bone right. horribly. Right. I got in there. I don't white pair of pants. White pair of shoes, no socks. Perfect. An island shirt and a windbreaker. Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> You're prepared for winter. <laughs> when yeah. I walked outside. I put on a windbreaker. What do I know? Yeah. I was like, what? So anyway, right to the mall, Miracle Mile, buy some warm clothes. Right? Yeah. But I was like a fish out of water, man. I just could not survive the weather. Yeah. Couldn't, couldn't take it. As much as I tried, but I learned a lot, right? Yeah. Um, Chicago was a great experience as far as just, you know, living in a city, mm -hmm. right? Being able to walk around and see so much concrete and uh, being able to go to fancy restaurants yep. and meet, um, you know, athletes. And, you know, sort of, a, again, just an island boy Yep. moving into a city. And you are just awed and amazed at the height of the building, the opportunity. Concrete jungle is the term that I use, right? Fantastic. So, yeah, never had been to a city before. Yeah. You know, never had been to New York or any other city like that. So it was very humbling, but yeah. um, it was an advantage that I really and thoroughly enjoyed and learned from. So, so now we fast forward. Winter, second winter, <laughs> December. You're like, okay, <laughs> thank you very much. I got a, I'm, I'm a front runner. I got promoted. And now you're an arbitrager and you're like, all right, we're... We're, yeah, yeah, I just said, you know, and I spoke to the guy who hired me, who gave me an opportunity, which I thoroughly enjoyed and got my Series 7. I'm key teed up to become a real player. That's yeah. just how I am. When I take on something, you know, I want to excel. I'm very used to, to pushing, learning, becoming the high performer in anything that I do. It's mm -hmm. kind of the history of what I do. I was a top swimmer, became the number, you know, in the, in the brokerage business, moved up through the ranks. So I said, okay, that's enough. I can't take it anymore. I did my uh, homework. I said, okay, I'm going to now use my real estate degree. Yep. So this is 1983. Where's the fastest growing city in America? Strategically, did the research, discovered it was in Tampa, Florida. Across the entire, at this time, across the whole United States, it was Tampa, Tampa Florida. Tampa, and I think number one was maybe, I think it was on the West Coast. Maybe it might have been San, San Francisco at the Something time. Something like that, yeah. Yeah, so I'm not too sure. 
So I packed up my old green Honda, all rusted from the snow, yep. and drove drove it all the way down to Tampa. Um, got a couple of dollars in my pocket, and I took that degree, and I started knocking on doors. Yeah. So I went to real estate firms. At that point, I didn't want to do sales. My passion was more in the appraisal. That kind of was where I was headed, right? Yeah. So I started to interview with appraisal companies, and I landed a job. Cool. Um, yeah, so, you know, a lot of hard work, but anyway, somebody saw the value. And in the business that I got into, the company, there was a great mix of Gators, mm -hmm. Florida Gators and Florida State Seminoles. Yep, FSU and FSU. Yeah, so yeah. a lot of guys I went to school with, so we yeah. reconnected. So it was a good marriage, right? Very cool. Um, first year, as an appraiser, I made nine grand. Went through a divorce, okay. made $9,000. All right, hold right? on. <laughs> <laughs> All right, hold on. Now, how can you live off of nine thousand dollars? Yeah, I was gonna say, how do you live off nine thousand dollars? Like mm -hmm. you slept on the floor, right? Slept on the floor. Slept on the floor. Buddy yeah. of mine. So, again, within two months of moving, my wife, my ex-wife and I, we decided just not working out. Yeah. So, go through the divorce, and here I am. So, so buddy took me in. And I never forget it. Again, humbling. Yeah. We all we all go through humbling experiences in yeah. life. So keep you grounded. Yeah. Um, nine grand. Living out of box lunches, buying stuff that I'd never eaten before, you know, counting the pennies. Yep. But again, the drive to succeed. I could have easily said, you know, this isn't for me. Let me move back to the Bahamas, kind of go back and get the support of my family, uh, live at home. Mm -hmm. But that's just not my temperament, right? Yeah. So I was determined to make it. Like you didn't want to risk not winning again. Not like winning. you mentioned earlier, like you just keep working until you win type Until I thing, win. Right? Yeah. And it's a drive. Yeah. Every time your feet hit the ground, you want to go. So anyway, so what happened in the seven years while I was in Tampa, I became again the number one residential appraiser recognized by the industry in my territory. Yeah. A Despite lot of work. making $9,000 a year. You the were first year. Gotcha. Right. Okay. So obviously, you know, appraisals is a funny business because you get um, paid per appraisal. There's only so many appraisals you can do in a given day. Yeah. Right. And then that'll lead to another story. So about sales and the difference in the industry. So a lot of learning though, mm -hmm. right? Um, in doing appraisals, you learned how to, you know, value a house. Yeah. You learn how to talk to developers. Yeah. You learn how master plan developments come together. You learn about construction, mm -hmm. about quality of construction. You learn about location, which is very important in the business. So the and then through all of that, you're taking classes, formal classes, in order to get certified in the, within the appraisal industry, right? I had no idea that that appraising or the, the process of appraisaling or whatever, you know what I mean, is like hits so many different points because you just mentioned government, you mentioned policy, you mentioned master development plan, which is definitely like state or government driven. Mm -hmm. You mentioned real life individuals, big dollars, you mentioned zoning, you mentioned community, like if I'm understanding correctly, like being an appraiser, you're really at this like intersection of, of effectively everyone else's interests. Yes. Right. Yes. A lot yeah. of moving parts. Yeah. And everything, just think about it. It all has an impact on value. Yep. Right. So, and that's why they say location, location, location is the number one thing. Yep. When it comes to uh, buying a property, but again, it was um, so. Tampa was just booming. It was taken off. This was in the eighties. 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 Right. Gotcha. Uh, so. Good experience, and as we neared the 1990s, the Gulf War started to heat up. Savings, Savings and loan, loan crisis. Right? Yeah, yeah, you're, you're pretty good for a young guy. <laughs> <laughs> I have a degree in finance. Like I like I studied the trends, and I remember when Ben Bernanke, like when he was like in charge of everything, he wrote, um, "I'm he, ah. yeah." Like he wrote his thesis on like the depression. Right. Like the 20s and 30s. Yeah. And that's what drove the U.S. out of depression or, or didn't make it as bad. So, like, I've read, like, Alan Greenspan's books. Like, like for you. I'm not good at finance, but I'm good at the history of finance. You yeah, know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. So you remember that, though, because a lot of people sort of lose track so of I was, the impact of that. So this was before my time. Yeah. But I remember my parents talking about it. I remember reading the books on it. I right. remember, like, the policy changes, how, like, credit unions are now structurally different than, like, yeah. Like the Volkner rule, I'm mispronouncing it, but like why that's like a big problem now. Like banks are so big, they're systematically, you have to save them no matter what. Mm -hmm. Like if Bank of America goes down, that's it. You're done, right? Well, we, we sort of saw a huge impact in 2007. Correct. So price, same, similar, but yeah, so that was sort of the first taste, you know, and, and, and having 
to go through that type of a market. And so from the appraisal industry, it became tricky because we became the blame. Yep. Everything is Why is your appraisal value. not too high? Why is it too low? Why right. is it wrong? And There's a three bedroom down the street. A lot yep. of legislation, a lot of responsibility, liability. And um, I said, okay, it's just getting a little bit kind of out of hand, but you know, haven't been away now for 17 years. Yeah. From high school to college. Away from the Bahamas. Bahamas. Yeah. High school, college, Chicago, Tampa. I said, finally, it's time to go back. Did you feel like at this point you had earned your stripes? Because I remember you mentioned when you work at family, like you know what to do, but nobody believes you, like you haven't cut your teeth yet. Yeah. Was this really like you went to the Wild West, you survived, and I can come back and learn a lesson and teach? Well put, yeah. yeah. I think, I, think I, I said, okay, I'm ready. Yeah. Because now I've earned my stripes. Yeah. Now I've done the groundwork. Now I'm educated. And now I am ready to take on the Bahamas. Yeah. That's kind of my approach. Fantastic. And to lead into that, so my idea was, okay, I'm going to move home and I'm going to open up my own business, mm -hmm. right? So I was laying the groundwork for that. I was meeting bankers, lawyers, developers, sellers. And then somebody said, you know, Mario, maybe you need to talk to this company because mm -hmm. they, they might be a good fit for you. And gotcha. there was a real estate company that existed. There was a partnership called, um, at the time, Caribbean Management. Like and a I, public pri private uh, just partnership, a, just a, a traditional sort of brokerage business gotcha. that exab you know that what was established. So the company was made up of a, a um, an accountant, a commercial uh, department, an appraisal department, and a sales department. Yeah, and and I said, you know, maybe it is a good idea for me to join them in a partnership role. Yeah, instead of opening up my own business. Gotcha. Right. So again, with all of my education, my clout, my knowledge, I was able to negotiate my mm -hmm. partnership role in an established partnership environment. Because you had worked in Chicago, you understood financial markets, you had appraisals, you had that whole background degree in finance idea, yeah. of, of real estate. Yeah, and nobody really ever came back to the Bahamas qualified. Right, yeah. I was one of a kind. Yeah. Right? So when I went there though, Jeff, I always tell this story, that company at the time, their average was one sale a year. This was in the 80s, right? 90s. 90, now 1990. In the 90s. Now, now in the 90s. October 1990. Yeah. So I said, man, what an opportunity. Here's a brand that has a very good uh, niche in the market. Mm -hmm. And I'm now transitioning from appraisals into sales, mm -hmm. right? Knowing that that was always my passion. I sold my first house when I was 17, working with my dad, bought a car, yeah. had fun, traveled, and then I went back to school, right? So... But anyway, so I took the risk and I said, this company, I can, I will redefine their sales department and I will be, I would do what I do best. Doing the number one thing again. Right. Right. Trying to be number one, best of you, all that. Driven. Driven. Right. Yeah. I joined this partnership. Yeah. I was there for 18 years. I put that company on the map. Yeah. Right. During that time, I was selling probably anywhere from 90 to $100 million worth of real estate a year. Okay, doing that on a small island had yeah. never been heard of. I was a top producer for 18 years straight Still in the with industry. Still with the partnership? Still with the partnership. Gotcha. At, as in any partnership, as you grow, philosophy changes, yep. ideas changes, succession plans changes. So in 2007, we got to that point. Yeah. And then I said, okay, well, we're going in different directions. I'm going to go on my own. 2007. I opened up my own business, Mario Care Realty, MCR, came up with my own brand, um, and at the same time was going through a divorce and in the heat of the recession. Yep. But funny enough, um, my very first sale, right? With MCR. With MCR, on my own, Yeah. was the number one largest beachfront sale in the history of the Bahamas at the time for $21 million. A big number. Just for a beachfront lot. That's right? crazy. And you think about you know the commission that you make from that not not so not 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 so shabby yeah right so so that was a great way to launch the business right um, so now fast forward 2007 we get through the recession and in um, I've been now with Better Homes and Gardens franchise yep and for three years so that would take me to 2000 what is it with 2019 2016 yep so again another first. I am the first international real estate franchise for the Better Homes and Gardens brand. Yeah. 
So why me? Why the Bahamas? And I think it's a great accomplishment. That's fantastic. Yeah. So I know that you wanted to talk specifically about the Bahamas, Bahamian real estate, like what's going on and all that fun stuff. So like, what are some things that you think, like if I wanted to buy into the Bahamas, right? Like what should I be knowing? How would you make that deal? What would you like to go over? Um, well, first of all, you should know, I would say it's easy to buy. Yeah. Um, we have sort of a red carpet approach. So if Jeff wants to buy a condo in the Bahamas, it's easy. It's yeah. sort of similar to what you would do here in the States. We have an MLS, mm -hmm. we have licensed agencies, we have financing that's available. You can borrow, you would have to do the transaction in US money. Yep. Um, we have similar type products, that built modern on the water condos. Yeah. We have association fees. Um, so just to say that it's a very seamless and easy process mm -hmm. if you wanted to come to buy real estate in the Bahamas. Most important though is you would want to work with a person who first of all is licensed and per first of all that's very knowledgeable. Yeah. Right. Interesting. So, so and you can find, you know, we're driven by the website. So if you typed in real estate in the Bahamas, yep. all the agencies are doing the SEOs and they're doing the social media and but all you would always sort of maybe ask, you know, referrals are a big part of our business, right? Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned something earlier about like government policy right. and it's changing or something right. like that and you're driving that change. Uh huh. What was like government policy like beforehand? What was the change and what was it like after? So good question. So when I first came to the Bahamas in 1990, for you to make a purchase, mm -hmm. you would have had to have gotten government approval. Okay. Right? And that could have taken up to a year. And Just, why would I want to, like there's so many options out there. Why do I have to deal with that, right? Right. So there, there was a real, there was a couple of things. It took a long time to get the approval. And then there was a huge opportunity for corruption. Yeah. Right? So the government changed in 1992, and then that policy changed. So it said, if you become a first time buyer, and this is very important in real estate in the Bahamas, and if it's anything under five acres, you need no government approval. First time purchase, under five acres, yeah. no government approval. Gotcha. That's a very red carpet. Because the Bahamas is a small island, small population, and the government's intent was to sort of protect the ability for Bahamians to own real estate. Correct, yeah. Right? So we just can't have people come in and buy up everything. Yes. And so there's a there's a fine balance there. So how does the government now balance that out, Jeff? Um, buying real estate in the Bahamas is not cheap. Mm -hmm. It is not, uh, our prices can compare to what you're seeing here in Florida, can compare to what you're seeing in the big cities. Yep. Um, beachfront property. Not like buying for in Kansas, right? Oh, no, not yep. at all. It's not a banana republic. Yep. People come in sometimes with that attitude. So prices are not cheap, right? But the cost of doing the deal, so mm -hmm. the, the, the policy is we're not a spec type investment. You know, you have a lot of programs here. They show you how you're buying flip houses and all that stuff, but you can't do that in the Bahamas. And the way the government controls that is because of the closing costs. Yeah. They're very expensive in a transaction. In any given transaction, if you bought a house, say, for a million dollars, which you're going to do for me probably in the next year. Perfect. Happy uh, to do it. Yeah, yeah great. As you, as you grow. And Love that. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so in that transaction of a million, you're going to have to pay 5% VAT. Mm -hmm. you're gonna Value have to pay, added tax is very European. Right. Yeah. On top of that. Yeah. You're going to have to pay an attorney. The attorneys charge anywhere from 1% to 2%. Mm -hmm. Right. So you think 6% on top of a million. Yeah. So that's just closing costs. And then the seller has to pay their portion of the cost as well as the agent. Yeah. Right. So that's so they got to pay six percent to the agent, five percent to the government, and their own attorney. Yeah. But in one transaction, that's almost thirteen. Um, well, actually, it's ten, six, seventeen percent in yeah. one transaction. So for you to be able to recover sort of that cost, you need to hold that period, that p uh, property for at least three to five years. Yeah. Right. So we, the, the policy of the closing costs, which you don't experience here in the States, mm -hmm. stops some of that speculative buying. Yeah. And so hence the government is able to say, okay, you can come and buy without any approvals, but we're really not a giving you a platform where you can do a lot of speculation. Gotcha. That yeah. is unlike, say, like Florida real estate, which right. was like flip, 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 flip all buy, the way flip, through. Buy, flip. So it's kind of important. Yeah. But we... Um, you know, we have a, a large population of U.S. buyers, Yep. right? They come from the, the Florida area and or the New York area. And yeah. people come for vacation. An American buyer enjoys the lifestyle of the Bahamas. Yeah. Versus international buyers, they come 
and buy and live for offshore reasons. Yeah. Because of our tax structure. Mm -hmm. So we offer a program that's called permitted residency. Yeah. So if you invest seven hundred fifty thousand dollars. So like buying a home. Right? Buying a home. Yeah. Buying a home condo. Yeah. You're a Canadian. Okay. A Canadian come in, buy seven fifty. They reside now. They they relocate to the Bahamas. Yeah. They're now domiciled, and all of their tax structure is tax free. Gotcha. Through structuring, proper business uh, structuring, but ownership of real estate. Yeah. Is the key component to that. So now I can pay the same tax rate of the Bahamian, which is zero. Interesting. It, very interesting. So that's why like private wealthy individuals who have like family offices and things like that, they like structure it and they say, I'm going to be in the Bahamas first. Very good. Right? Just like Jersey in like Europe or like, yeah. there you go. Yeah. yeah gotcha. That's a big part of the business. So that, that threshold of 750 was just established last year. It was 500. Mm -hmm. Initially, in back in the in the 1992, 95, it was 250. Yeah. So the the Bahamas has gradually said we want a sort of caliber of persons coming to our country to mm -hmm. buy real estate. So we've set that bar at 750. Yeah. Again, prices reflect that lifestyle availability of land limited supply and um, so the entry level fruit really for that um, type of investment is 750. gotcha now you can get in you can get into the bahamas for a lot less and again everything's driven by location correct right um so yeah so that's kind of you know the residency program yeah. the tax structuring is a huge part of the real estate industry very cool. And the knowledge of knowing how to structure that, the knowledge of knowing how you know how to uh, set up, where to buy, why to buy. Um, you combine the residency, 750, maybe with a little bit of Airbnb component. Yeah. So now I can buy it as a residence when I'm not in the Bahamas, not saying that you know I might go and visit or live based on where, my lifestyle. While I'm not there, I can now rent it out. Yeah to the Airbnb. So now you're paying for your investment. Do I have to live in the Bahamas a certain amount of time out of the year? Good question. No, we don't count days. Gotcha. That is unlike, say, Puerto Rico and Act 2020 and stuff like that. Oh, even the United States, right? Or even the United States, yeah. So if you come into the US, I think it's 180 consecutive days, not consecutive, but within a year. Yeah. That then you would be obligated for tax purposes. Correct. Yeah. So uh, approximately again, so now we also attract a lot of people um, Jeff out of Latin America yep. and Brazil. So now they can, um, you know, a lot of different reasons why you would leave Latin America if you're wealthy. Mm -hmm. People are getting kidnapped. It's just unstable, unsta stable, want unstable. a better life, a million reasons. Yeah. yeah. Brazil, same thing, you know, unstable, a lot of political stuff. So now they can come into the Bahamas, live there, get on a 30 minute flight, yeah. be in Miami, do their business in Brickell. Mm hmm. Now, finance major, did you know Brickell is actually the second largest financial state in America? It blows my mind because you think of like New York, yeah. you think of Chicago, uh, like even like there's part of San Francisco where these like huge mega corporations, they're mostly Chinese, but you know what I mean, right? Yeah. And at no point in my journey did I ever look back home and say the opportunity was there. Just didn't happen. Unbelievable. Yeah. I was shocked when they told me that, yep. right? that Brickell is that influential in the financial markets. Yep. So anyway, so we see a lot of that. We see a lot of wealthy guys. You know, they come in, they buy a penthouse, seven million dollar penthouse. They have their private jets, and then they have their meetings in Miami, and then they come back. What a horrible <laughs> life! Like just, <laughs> oh god, how could I? I the know. dream, right? That'd be I so. I know, cool. I know, I know, I know. You mentioned something that like you're helping determine policy in government to change for the better. We talked about that like when we were like pre-showing all that. Right. I was hoping you could go into that a little bit more in depth and in detail. That's fine. So. Um, the the VAT yeah, that we value spoke tax, about, right, yeah. at one time was 12%. That's right? enough to stop somebody and say, right. Yeah. So I said to the government, let's be sensitive to that. It, I was able to prove to them that there was a direct correlation in the reduction of business because of that increase of 2% yeah. on, the, on the closing cost. Then they had an open-end policy about real property tax. Mm -hmm. So before, it was a percentage of the assessed value. Yeah. So I was able to show the government that let's cap it. So no matter what- Like a what, homestead. Yeah. yeah. So let's say if you own a $5 million house, the most tax you'll pay is 50 grand for the year, property Correct. tax. Yeah. If you own a $100 million house, the most you'll pay is 50,000. Yeah. Before, it would have been a percentage. 
gotcha. one percent, one and a half percent. So we went from paying one hundred and fifty thousand to fifty. Yeah, that policy was very instrumental in having people feel confident that comfortable that they can invest in the Bahamas and not get gouged. Correct. By policy when it comes to their real estate purchase. I guess when it's in the U.S., you're just kind of used to it. And you say, I'm used to paying an X percentage. Yeah. But you have to take this huge leap of faith. Right. And you're always afraid you're going to get burned. You're and you have to provide that level of security and structure and saying, it ain't going to happen here type right. thing. Right. Yeah, no. So it, it in the United States, it's not cheap. Real property tax is, Correct. is not uh, inexpensive. Correct. It's amazing, right? But again, it's a trade-off. In the Bahamas, we don't have income tax, we don't have capital gains tax, and we don't have inheritance tax. Yeah. But at the same time, we don't have all of the services that you have here, the nice highways, the parks, the, mm -hmm. the, the schools. and So it's a good trade-off. Uh, and that's just the way it is. There's no way around it, right? Yeah. So the way we make money, the way the government makes money is by duty. Mm -hmm. It's a bit shocking. So it's, but if you don't buy, you don't pay. Yeah. So that's, you know, if you bought a car here for, say, $30,000, you'll pay 75% duty on the car before it hits. It's a big number. Yeah. <laughs> it's crazy, right? Yeah. So you say, well, how can people afford the cars and how can people afford to, you know, to drive? But so now what happens is the Japanese cars really have a big place, the little zip cars that you can drive around. And yeah, just, like smart cars and smart stuff cars like that. And, yeah. yeah. So it sounds just like uh, the structure behind Morocco, which has like a. Every time you buy, there is a tax type there's thing. There's a tax. And like, I, I know that they have like the highest percentage income or GDP per capita like in the whole world, oh, right? That's your finance knowledge. Yeah, yeah so yeah, like, yeah. there you go, right? <laughs> I spent a lot of time on YouTube. Like, I just go deep into it. Um, and that's, I think that's like really interesting. So was there anything else that you think somebody should watch that's watching this should know about you and your journey or anything else that we want to have like focused on the limited time that we have? Sure. I mean, I, I the reason why I wanted to take advantage to have the show with you is yeah. to get the message out that in the Bahamas, Mario Carey's name yeah. is the name for real estate. Yeah. The reputation speaks for itself. The, the recognition in the industry. I help sell policy. I set policy. I am very well connected within the business community. Yeah. My knowledge is vast. I do appraisals. I do consulting work. I do sales. I've done over $2 billion worth of transactions. So let's talk about that for a second. <laughs> so like, I think that's such a significantly large number that it blows my mind to think $2 billion, right? So you're turning into like the $2 billion man, man. Bahamian, just $2 billion man, right? Like in the industry selling $2 billion worth of real estate, no matter by where it is, it's pretty it's recognizable. A, it's a big number, big right? Number. Yeah. And that's comparable to like Ryan Sarant or like Ben Mala, but nobody just, they're just a bigger name. You're bigger just, name, bigger right. market, bigger population. Correct. Yeah. I'm in a population of 180,000 people. Right. Yeah. So like looking back, were there like any like massive deals that you had to like glue together, stick together, make something work, pull something out of left field? Like this would have gone wrong if it weren't for you. Like I know real estate transactions are like kind of finicky, especially like I'm watching Billionaires Row in New York, right? Like for any reason, I don't want to do this anymore, especially oh, yeah. when you're sending like a hundred million dollars. Oh yeah. Like you have to do everything and make it as best spoke. Yeah. And red carpet as possible. So there are any are there any like deals that stand out recently over like your two billion dollar journey of like, I'm so happy this happened. This is a skill set I used because I was at appraisal. I understood all the aspects, government, everything like that. Yeah, I and again, you know, one thing about the Bahamas is the level of confidentiality is very high. Yeah. Um, because it is an offshore trend uh, jurisdiction. But I did a sale where there were um, six different owners in a row, right? So you had six different owners all owning property next to each other. Oh, like actual, like in a row of homes. Right. Gotcha. And I had a buyer that wanted them all. Mm -hmm. So my goal now was to get him those properties at a good price yeah. without the neighbor knowing. So kind of like how Walt Disney bought like all of like middle of Florida. Yeah. You think about that. So yeah. you think about that on a small island. You think about that on neighbors who talk. Yeah. And you think about it's very expensive real estate. You know, you're talking about 10 million, seven and a half million. Per home. Per home. That's a big number. Big number. It's like a $50 million transaction. Maybe a little bit more than that. Oh my God. That's fantastic. <laughs> that's so cool. That's so awesome. So that was, uh, but the ability to first get the sellers to commit to a price, mm -hmm. to do it confidentially, to because the minute if they heard that the, something was happening next door, 
they could have easily changed their minds. Correct. Yeah. And there was the delicate part about that. But in a very open, confidential, disclosure way, I was able to pull that transaction off six different owners. Yeah. Beachfront property, very high number, yeah. very good payday, and very memorable. Right? Yeah. But that deal what that does is just continues to solidify the skills that I bring to the table. Yeah. And it's very seldom that I would meet a, a client that doesn't want to work with me. So that's sort of the message, you know, just how, how can this environment get the message out that in the Bahamas, if you're coming to buy real estate, yeah, you have somebody who is very qualified, very experienced, a great negotiator, very knowledgeable, mm -hmm. very connected and very dedicated yeah. to, to service you. And I just hope that, you know, through this message, they, they know that that person exists in the Bahamas. And that's Fantastic. I, I saw it on your YouTube channel, right? You're taking a whole new direction, right? Like you're, you're doing more of like, I exist. It's a real thing. It's totally possible. It's totally doable. And you're making the world know that not only this is an opportunity, but you're the guy that does $2 billion worth of real estate. Just like Ben Mala, just like Ryan Sarant, right? right? Like big like, names, right? You're seeing those people like, I yeah, can do that too, I can right? do that. When I saw that, I was like, I can do that. Perfect. And you've right. got like the background, the education, the experience, all that. But like, what does like, what does your next stage look like? Where are you going with like your marketing, your sales, your distribution? Like what does 2.0 look like for you? Hmm, good question. Um, well, I think the reason why I'm here is yeah. because your team you and Brandon are going to help me define that. Perfect, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I must say it's, uh, it's humbling to see an industry change so quickly yeah. as far as the real estate business. Doing business as you did it before, it's hard to survive. Yeah. I pride myself on knowing, noticing trends, listening, being educated, and everything that I hear now is the, smart, the phone, yep. social media, um, YouTube, uh, doing deals, and whatever that social media platform is, yep. you need to be a part of it. Correct. And luckily, I was able to hook up with your team, with you and Brandon, and um, I see myself pioneering, as far as Bahamian yeah. real estate industry, moving in this direction. There's gotcha. nobody else doing it because I see the value in it. Are you seeing like the, the big transition of like, real estate agents focusing too much on the home instead of focusing on like, like what we can do for you. Like what is that transition that you're seeing? You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, you know, the, the, the traditional message is, okay, this is a three bedroom with closets and a view. And, yeah. and that kind of gets, instead of saying to the client, when you come to me, I bring a lot of value. There we go. I yeah. bring unique value. I bring successful value. Yeah. Right. And if it's social media, if that is the way to get the message out there, then here I am. Perfect. And again, I'm no expert in it, but I've been at 61, I've been convinced that this is the way to go. Yeah. And uh, no longer is just putting up signs and putting ads in the newspaper and some of those things still have a lot of value. Yeah. But the reach through what we're doing today and Correct. what we're doing through this platform of my show, Island Dreams, Yeah. I'm very confident that that reach now would be a success because of the platforms. Correct. And the creativity and the message. So yeah. here I am in the Bahamas, Island Dreams. Perfect. You ready to come to the Bahamas? Look me up on YouTube. I guess that's what I should say, right? I yeah, right. I mean, it's just, we'll get into the habit of it. Find me on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram, all that stuff. Yeah, so, and you know, that language is a bit unique. Yep. Um, but that's what my attempt is. And I believe it's gonna happen. So a, my bike shop client, like I mentioned earlier, went through the same transition. So he's around your age, he's been biking his whole life, and he had, he's had a singular shop in Coconut Grove his whole life, right? And what we found is that, like, he's got a great product, a great service, he takes care of his clients, like, he will not leave you until you feel whole, and that you know that he knows that you were taken care of, like. Very important. Right. Very important. Massively important, and especially, like, in a day and age where like, everybody's very flaky, and nobody calls you back, like, he's still picking up the phone, like, hey, how was your bike? Did you want to go biking with the crew on Sundays, right? Right like a top notch person and product and team, right? Right. But his challenge is always like nobody knows. Right. Right. And he used to do what you mentioned before, like like his bike shop version of like putting the sign in the ground. Putting the sign in the ground. And so what we right. ended up doing for him is we actually did like character studies. We did uh, videos about him, videos about the shop and the people that he serves. 
right? And nobody knows, or back then nobody knew that every Sunday he does Sunday fun runs or fun rides. Him and the the bike shop crew, the people that actually go there, they close the shop for an hour and a half. They all go biking. Wow, right? Right. it's like pretty cool. Yeah, and like, that's cool. Like you can see him with like logos and all that. Everybody <laughs> didn't know. Like they just kind of assumed, right? And now we are running ads saying, "Hey, did you want to go biking with us every Sunday? Here's our route. Come on by." Bring a bike. If you don't have one, you can rent it. Bring a helmet. If you don't have one, you can buy it. And now he's got 70 people every Sunday. Every Sunday. Every Sunday. At like 6 in the morning. Wow. I'm like, who wakes up at 6 in the morning? Go, Bikers do. I'm a triathlon, do. man. Triathlon. You know exactly what I mean, it's right? It's crazy, like, man. Wake up at dawn and, and sweat your ass <laughs> off before 11, right? Things that we do for fun. Right. right? Like, yeah. it's so great. I hate this. This is awesome, right? My body, my whole body hurts. And now he's got 70 real life human beings. Like he's got his tribe. I love right? a story like this. Like yeah. it's absolutely fantastic. And we've got like 90 second biking videos. We're writing his bike book. We're putting out like a 90 day bikeathon programs. And people are realizing it's not so much about like the bike itself, but it's about the team of people making sure you're taken care of. Making sure it's taken care of. That's the key. I mean, if you're in the business, if you're in sales and yep. especially if you're coming to a foreign country, right? And I, I say to anybody, I do it jokingly, but you know, Get in a cab if you come here and just ask the cab driver, do you know Mario Carey? Yeah. And just see what they say. Yeah. And hopefully they say yes. Go to the conch stand. Yeah. Go to the waiter at the restaurant. Go to, because I am in, I am a Bahamian, I'm ingrained. I give a lot back as well. Yeah. I'm very ingrained in the community, social with charity, right? The development of the youth, uh, yeah. helping with the hurricane. Um, but the reputation never, there's never quite any question there, but, but it's all about service. If somebody works with me, yeah. uh, you know, I got guys that come in and they're looking to buy real estate. I, I pick them up. Yep. I check them in at the hotel. Yep. I make sure that their room is right, that they're, they're whatever they need. If they need to go to the bank, I in, take them to the bank. I introduce them to the bank Yeah. and they're just like blown away. Right. I yeah. mean, like who does this stuff? So, but you know, if I was to put myself in their shoes, if I was to go to a country that I didn't know anything, but I wanted to buy real estate, yeah, I try to relate to that. And right? that's that's something that you would expect to be done at a level of service, and then you're doing that for other people at the same level of service, right? right? That's interesting. So is there like, so can we talk about the, the hurricane and that experience with Bahamas and all that? Or is that kind of like... No, I think um, it, I appreciate you bring it up. I mean, it happened. Yeah. It was tragic. Yeah. Um, but there were a couple ways I look at that. And you always try to figure out the positive in almost anything. What we have now known is that the Bahamas is a world name now. Yeah. People didn't really know about the Bahamas, but they, now they know. Yeah. Right? They know what the Bahamas is about. They know where it's located. They know it exists. What they don't know is that we have 700 islands. Yeah. And what they didn't know is that only two of the islands were impacted. Interesting. Devastated, yeah. but impacted. Correct. So hopefully, as a nation, we will build on that. Mm -hmm. um, we will recover. Uh, we are recovering. Yeah. But there are another hundreds of islands right. that you can visit. Yeah. And that tourist product and that lifestyle and that opportunity still exists. I'm a, I got to give the current government, especially the Ministry of Tourism, which is their portfolio, promoting the Bahamas. Mm -hmm. And they're gradually getting that message out. Um, Anybody that's running hotels, that are doing Airbnbs, in the conversations in the last few weeks, they're indicating that the reservations have now been getting better. Yeah. Before everything was canceled. Correct. So I was like, man, I just lost a million dollars worth of bookings, right? Yep. Because people didn't know that um, the Bahamas was more than just two islands impacted by the hurricane. So somebody could have had an Airbnb at Grand Bahamas. Grand Bahamas. Right, and canceled it. Right. Not knowing it was totally okay. Well, Memina, Grand Bahama was hit, yeah. but not knowing that they can do an Airbnb in Zuma yeah. or Eleuthera or Nassau or Long Island. Gotcha. There were 700 islands. 698 other ones to choose from. Choose from. Right. And that is the unique, and that's the beauty of it. So if you came and you said, hey, I want to live in the Bahamas. I want to own some real estate. Yeah. I'm going to say, Jeff, you know, buy in Nassau. But your lifestyle is getting on a boat yeah. and going to spend a weekend on another island where the culture is different, the people are different. The, the sea life is different or get on a plane and drive down to Inagua, fly down to Inagua where the salt mines are, where the flamingos are. Yeah. Go swim with the pigs. I've seen that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> get on a boat, go spend a day swimming with the pigs, come back, have dinner at a fancy five-star restaurant, go to the casino. So yeah. you can now be in a city 
and while being on an island. Yeah. Right. And again, having 700 islands is not bad. That's so cool. It is cool. Yeah. Um, I think we've got like everything that we need. Yeah. yeah. But was there something like a missing chat or like, oh, I forgot about that one thing that you want to go over for a bit? Um, I, you know, the Bahamas, we are a sophisticated nation. You know, we're growing. Um, our language is English. Yep. Our currency is on par with the U.S. dollar, yep. which is huge. Um, our IT is is um, second to none, you know, yep. with all the Internet and with all the banks. Our, um, we have a very um, educated population, if I can say that. Uh, we're very welcoming. Yeah. Um, and as far as the real estate business, it has continued to perform well. There is always opportunity. It's still sort of a buyer's market um, as far as prices are concerned. Mm -hmm. um, some areas have recovered from the recession, yet some have not. There is um, easy ability to borrow money. Yep. Uh, which, you know, you can go to the bank and as a U.S. buyer, you put down 20% and you can get a loan. Normal. Normal stuff. Yeah. A lot of people don't know that. Ownership is fee simple. Yeah. Um, good investment opportunities through Airbnb. Our Airbnb business is just booming. Yep. Right? I mean, as a, as a tourist destination, that's I think the stat says 78% of the United States population can be in the Bahamas within three and a half hours. Yep. Right? So our Airbnb model is a good opportunity for people to invest. Um, and uh, yeah, and that Mario Carey is the guy. Perfect. What else can I say, Jeff? That's fantastic. That's I hope so I was cool. able to help you, though. I know you had some good questions, and uh, yeah. So my, my goal is really to, like to pull out a story that makes a lot of sense for yeah. people that are watching this. Yeah. Um, I think we definitely like we've got what we need to be successful. 